Hello everybody and welcome to Project Cars 3. Now, before this review begins, I just want to hand over to my past self, who had a few preliminary thoughts. So, I've just pre-ordered Project Cars 3, ready to play on Friday, and I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of give my thoughts and opinions and a bit of context about my mindset before I actually play the game. Because Lord knows there's been a lot of controversy surrounding the rollout of this game, and the, let's be frank, very, very odd shift, no pun intended, by the way, the the franchise has taken seemingly going into this arcade territory considering what the previous two project cars games were and i think the marketing surrounding that has been a bit dodgy as they tried to kind of pass it off as it's just a slightly more accessible version of project cars 2 because i ha as i said i haven't played the game yet but it it's not that let let's be fair but i am not really in that hardcore sim category of people who are going to be too bothered by that. The approach that this game has taken has honestly made me more excited to play it because it's something more up my alley. And yeah, we're just gonna see what happens. I'm forgetting it's a Project Cars game when I come to review it. it you know, I'm just gonna review it as simply a racing game. So let's kick off this review by talking about the car list. Now, the total number of cars is just over 200, so it's actually pretty healthy, and the cars are divided over quite a few categories, and some of them are a little bit weird with what cars are in the class, it doesn't seem to make too much sense, but that's not really too much of a bother. I wish there was a little bit more variety within the road car classes, but overall it's pretty good, and... As with the previous Project Cars games, the focus is still on those race cars. It's also important for me to mention the performance and visual customization, which is actually quite in depth, which surprised me. But it's a good thing to have, and I very much like the idea that you can do these works and race conversions for your road cars. However, of course, what matters is how these cars are to drive and what the general racing experience is like. So, let's start off with perhaps the most important thing, the physics. Now, yes, they are arcade but I think they've actually done a very good job with them. If you want to make a comparison, I'd say the physics falls somewhere between, say, Grid and Forza Motorsport. I think right in the middle of those two is about where it's at. Um, but it has avoided one of the main gripes I can have with more arcade physics engines, and that is that the cars all feel different to drive. Everything I've driven seems to have its own personality and its own handling traits, which has been quite nice to see. I, I really like that. Although I think some of the traits are a little bit over-exaggerated, like the almost GTE levels of <laughs> lift-off oversteer some of the like lower tier road cars had, but you learn to adapt to it and drive around it. It doesn't really get in the way too much. Maybe it was just me, you know, just starting the game needed to get used to it a bit. Once you move up to the race cars, you'll notice the cars do seem quite bouncy and I think that is mainly a visual thing but it's definitely present in the physics as well but I quite like it, it adds a bit of depth to the physics, it's not ridiculous and it keeps you on your toes a little bit, I I quite like it. There's also dynamic weather and dynamic time of day of course. Um, I was very interested to see how this would work out being an arcade game to see how much of an effect it would have and it, it does have an effect actually, more than I expected, and yeah, you. I've had a few kind of slight aquaplaning incidents when the puddles build up over the course of a race. Um, yeah, it's quite good, I was, I was quite impressed with that. So yeah, they've definitely done a good job with the physics. What though about the AI? Now, this one's a little bit more of a mixed bag, because as for their driving, they've also done a pretty good job, I was impressed. I tried. I did a race where we had 32 V8 supercars around Bathurst, and trying to get those down the mountain has the recipe for either one absolute carnage or two 
a boring, slow, slow moving train of frustration, but the AI did an admirable job, I must say. They also overtake pretty well. They take opportunities where it's reasonable to, and, you know, they keep you on your toes without making any ridiculous kamikaze dives and ruining your race. The trouble, though, comes with the difficulty in their coding, I think, a bit, because it doesn't happen all the time, but I have noticed a couple couple cases of some severe rubber banding that happened conveniently at the last race of a championship by the second place car. And that was quite quite frustrating because it was just blatant. Um I've also noticed with the race it's always in your best interests to get to the front of the grid as soon as possible if you want to win. Because if you do, you can get to the front pretty quickly if things go well, and then you tend to just kind of drop the rest of the field. But if it takes you a bit longer to get to the front, there's always that one driver who just vanishes off into the distance that you can never catch. It's quite strange that. As far as the bracing experience goes, the only other major gripe I have is with the penalty system. I get why it's there, supposed to incentivize clean driving and keep you from cutting the corners, but it gives you an unfair penalty just as many times as it actually stops you from cheating. Because with such tightly packed grids, you can kind of get pushed wide when trying to negotiate the AI. And, you know, most of the time when you get those penalties, you are not benefiting from it at all. And you're not, you know, going wide or cutting the track intentionally and the penalties can be a bit overly severe as well and it causes to a few frustrating restarts. I think this game would honestly benefit from a rewind system like Grid does. Fortunately though that's pretty much all the negative out of the way as far as the racing experience goes in single player and the career mode because overall it's good. I think that's in no small part down though to the fantastic track list. Yes, it's a few tracks down on Project Cars 2, Spa's missing for example, link up there to a video explaining why, but having so many tracks really helps the career mode feel less samey, and that repetitiveness is something that a lot of racing games fall into, but Project Cars 3 does avoid that pretty well. The races are also short and sweet, so you're not getting bored, and even if you do break away from the AI, you have three objectives per race to complete, which always gives you something to do and makes you feel like you're working towards something. I also like how time trials are incorporated into the career mode rather than being their own separate entity, because it adds a bit of variety to the career mode, and when you do those time trials it feels less like you're driving around for the sake of it. And as well as the races and time trials, you also have a couple of fun like smashing challenges and uh, the pace setter mode which where you have to set an average lap time over three laps and that's good for practicing circuits and getting some consistency going. I do wish however there was a little bit more kind of payoff at the end of the career mode championships for example if you won a car for example I think that'd be really good but overall it's fun to do, even if there isn't that payoff, so I don't really mind as much as I would. It's good. So then, let's discuss the visuals and the graphics, and unfortunately this is where things start to fall apart a little bit for Project Cars 3. Now, they're by no means the worst thing I've ever seen, they're not terrible. The cars and the tracks all look accurate and how they're supposed to, in terms of shape and scale and everything but it's with the shadows and the reflections on the paint, for example, that the side is really let down, it looks quite basic, a little bit unfinished, there's some jagged edges around, and it, it, it's not quite up to standard, unfortunately. As far as the menus and the UI goes, it's also not brilliant, it's a bit busy, it's a bit clunky to use, and 
It's not the end of the world, but it could have done with a bit more polish and maybe a rethink. The race AI is exactly the same. It it could have done with a rework, I think, because you just have to take your eye a little bit too far off the road to be able to look at what you want to, and that's kind of frustrating. So then, to wrap up my thoughts overall on Project Cars 3, it's a good game. I've had a lot of fun with it and will continue to do so. You'll probably see more videos about it on the channel in the coming weeks. The trouble is though, it just feels a little bit unfinished. It's lacking a bit of polish and hopefully in time these things can be ironed out with updates and whatnot. And in terms of content, we already know updates are on the way with post-launch tracks, which will be very nice to see. But for now, overall, with the problems it has, unless you're 100% sold on the idea of this game, I'd have a hard time recommending it at full price. By all means, buy it if you find it on a sale in the near future. But for now, for most people, I would wait a little bit. I'd hold off. But that's going to be it for this review. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good day. As far as the racing experience goes, the only other major grape I have... <coughs> Brilliant. Major grape... Burped. Yeah, I, I, I can make a career out of this. Definitely.